Hello, uh, welcome to our Google Plus experiment here. Um, my name is David Brennan. I'm here with the lovely Karen Warden sitting beside me, and we have a great group of folks here joining us uh, for our first ever hangout. And we're going to be talking independent film. And so as we begin, we want to go around the horn, and, um, and so we're going to start from left to right and have everyone introduce themselves. We'll start there. So if, if you can just say who you are, tell us where you're located, and maybe just a little bit about your current projects. Um, you know, we just want to keep that brief, and we'll just keep this moving. We'll get into a little discussion on independent film. So we'll start with you, um, Christopher. Hi, my name is Christopher Sean Shaw, and I'm in Sonoma County, California, which is near Santa Rosa, and about an hour north of San Fran. Um, I'm currently uh, fundraising for two uh, projects right now. One is a short, it's a faith-based short, and one is a feature-length film called Youth Group, and the short is called One Night Stand. It's on Kickstarter right now. And then, it's, then you're up next, John. All right. Uh, hi, I'm John Mercer. I'm an editor. Uh, I'm, yep. Okay. Sorry. Stuff with the delay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So I'm John Mercer. I'm an editor uh, based in Boston, Mass. Um, currently working on a short film called Remember Your Death. Um, been in uh, post-production all summer and sort of just wrapping things up for early August. Um, so we'll have more on that soon, hopefully. Hi, I'm Paul Miller. I'm from Los Angeles, and I'm an independent producer over at Summertime Media. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm working on uh, Dorothy of Oz right now. It's an animated feature. We raised our funds privately to make the movie. It's got Leah Michelle from uh, Glee in it, and uh, that's going to take another year of animation, so we just started doing another project uh, for a kid's show. And uh, I'm always interested in people that are in independent production and how they go about financing. Hello. Uh, I am uh, Rafi Azdorian. I am a video editor in New York City. Uh, I'm also an independent filmmaker. I've made a bunch of short films, some music videos, some abstract pieces. And uh, I am trying to get my first feature film first feature. Into, into kind of pre-pro. And uh, I'm still working on it because I work full time as a reality TV editor in New York City. So it's kind of like balancing the two is a little tough. But I'm hoping to get some time soon and then do, and get my first feature film underway. Um, Ross, I think you're up next because we have um, we have Robert just kind of sitting in just as the avatar. He just wants to watch. So you're up next, Ross. Oh, it's a fill in for the avatar. Can you guys hear me all right? <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, so I'm Ross Pruden, and I live in uh, Port Townsend, Washington. And we're, um, we're doing a lot of projects. I have a, a feature project that I'm working on. I have a TV series that I'm currently developing or pitching down in Los Angeles. Uh, I am currently developing some pretty interesting business models for independent filmmakers in particular. And that's about it. Oh, look at this. Oh. So, uh, you guys. <laughs> you look great, Sherry. It does look kind of strange to have like a black screen. So, this is me and my unvarnished truth. <laughs> Having come back from a walk um, and unexpectedly saw this on Twitter. Um, I'm Sherry Candler. I work with independent filmmakers to figure out how to build audiences and identities for themselves and um, use social media. I'm in the middle of putting together a digital book called Selling Your Film Without Selling Your Soul. Nice. It's about, um, it's case studies of filmmakers who have been navigating distribution on their own, either through hybrid distribution, DIY, or using uh, file sharing networks to put their work out. Um, today we got a script back on what this trailer is going to look like, so I'm really, really excited. Hopefully nice. we'll have it in the next week or so. Um, and we have a blog that's going that every Tuesday and Thursday we release some information from the book or something about our sponsors um, just to get people sort of knowledgeable about what to expect in the book. It'll be released in mid-September during IFP week in New York. 
and I'm going to be in New York during that time, um, sitting on a panel at IFP Week, and hopefully meeting people who are hanging out in New York at the same time. You hear that, Rafi? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, my name is Jonathan Schieffer. I have uh, shot a feature film, uh, a couple shorts. I'm currently working on a spec for Showtime, maybe, I hope. That's who I'm hoping to pitch it to. Uh, a near-future dystopia shot live action that we convert into animation. All right. And Am I giving my spiel again? Yes. Yeah, yeah. now you get, now you get the, the spiel officially, Sylvia. Okay. Um, Sylvia Franklin, um, based in Chicago. Um, I am a filmmaker. I'm currently co-producing a feature right now entitled uh, Things Never Said. It's on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Um, we have an IMDb page. We actually just completed uh, principal photography on the feature and am moving into the second phase, which is raising money for post and all that good stuff. Um, it's not my film. I didn't write it and direct it. It's um, another filmmaker's effort in that respect. But television is my background uh, for the most part as a writer and producer. And uh, I'm just branching out into the digital world and storytelling and strategy and having all those sort of disciplines intersect. Awesome. Well, this is this is a great grouping of, of yeah, folks we have here. We want to we want to thank each of you for for sort of hanging out with us here. Christopher, um, you know, how, how often do independent film trailers really get you excited where you're going to want to get out and, and, and see the movie? Not very often, actually. They, they, they usually don't look that interesting to me, to be honest with you. Uh, what is it about the most independent film trailers that look unappealing to you? I think they tend to all look kind of the same. Like, it seems to be the same kind of story, love triangle or something like that. And it just, they just have that indie kind of look and feel to them that looks the same as so many others. You know, like, um, John, John Mercer, what, 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 do you, what do you love about independent films? Well, uh, that's kind of a big question. I mean, <clears throat> I would say a lot of the times I, I enjoy making them more than I enjoy seeing them, which is sort of unfair. Um, but, um, I, I mean, you know, for me, I, I enjoy working on, on things that are um, fairly connected with or, or that's sort of my feel is that I, I, I know someone or, or it's... Um, story close to home, something like that. I, I think you sort of get that connection with an independent and you don't necessarily get that with a larger film. Um, that's just sort of my, my personal angle on it, though, I guess. You know, and, and Sherry, can you jump in? I mean, what, what do you love about independent film? I mean, you know, you, you, you're you so so gifted and so talented. We're sure that you, you would have the opportunity to work on, on larger um, films, but, but you choose to work on smaller films. Um, yeah, I, I think that you give me more credit than, than I deserve. Um, I have often said, and I think a lot of people in the industry don't really believe me, that I do not have any aspirations to work in the studio system. I have no aspirations to be the studio employee. In fact, I see the studio system as crumbling before my eyes, and it's like running into a burning building. I wouldn't do that. Um, I think that it's going to be much more about smaller audiences, but much more connected audiences to have the direct connection to those people, to have them care about you as a filmmaker, in addition to the way you tell stories and want to support you in that way. Um, and that's, I think, what attracted me to, to independent film as it is now. I mean, I always watched it. I always watched independent film when I you know, had a chance and it was in a place where I was, not when I lived in Russia, but um, I really like independent filmmakers. I just like to be around, you know, creative people. I recognize very early on that I'm not one of those people. I can't um, make films 
but I like to watch them and I like to be around people who can do that. Um, but I do have this talent for um, talking to audiences, having direct connections to people, being able to, um, to bring them in to something that I'm really excited about. It's also a reason why I can't work with every film that comes, that's presented to me, an opportunity that's presented to me, because if I don't like the film, if I can't connect to it or feel like it was really a good story, it's going to be really hard for me to go out and find an audience because I don't do it through advertising. I, I have to talk to these people. I have to get in, you know, into their community and really getting them excited about it. And if I'm not excited, I just can't fake it. They know the reason I'm there is to use them um, if I really don't believe in what I'm saying. So I have had to learn very early on to be careful about the projects that I picked to work on because when you're standing there and you're talking and you're trying to be believable, you can't do it well if you don't believe it yourself. Um, so I, that's another reason I think that I'm not attracted to the studio model because in the studio model, you don't have to, you know, it, you, you have to support whatever film they give you. They don't care if you personally like it or not. It's one of their slate and you've got to go out and work it. The only way to do that is to do it through one-way communication, through advertising, trying to get stories placed, all the stuff that separates you from the direct people who would uh, read it or watch it. Um, you're trying to create hoopla and hype and buzz. And I don't like those words because what you're saying is you're creating air <laughs> around a project that may or may not really deserve it. Um, and, and I don't want to fool people into going to see, trick them into going to see it the first weekend because they're so excited and, until they find out we pulled a fast one on them and taken their money. I, I just, I, that's not my mentality. It's not a mindset that I want to have. And so I don't have any aspirations to working with big films with lots of people and all that stuff around it. You know, Jonathan, um, Spirits is full. Do you, do you want to add some of your thoughts? Well, as a filmmaker, I mean, I, my goal is to tell a story. And so whatever does that best, if, it's, if it can be done in an indie setting, awesome, because that means, uh, you know, it gives me more freedom and, it, uh, and it's a lot easier, a lot less, you know, people having opinions. Not that that's not good. I mean, obviously more voices make something better oftentimes. Um, but at the same time, uh, there's a lot of things that I'm not able to do just because the money's not there. And so I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't really side one way or the other necessarily, although I do completely agree with what Sherry said about being passionate about something. I don't think I could ever take a project that I didn't love just because of how much work it takes to do any of it. Right. All right. And Sylvia, you're, you're sort of reconnecting with us here. Can, can you, can you tell us, you know, what, why you love independent film? Well, I just think that it gives um, it gives you another platform uh, to tell stories. Uh, you know, we're so fortunate and unfortunate at the same time in that you know mainstream television, even cable, only sort of appeals to a very narrow kind of uh, defined audience. And for people who have tastes outside of that, there really isn't an outlet for the stories that they may want to see, and I just think independent film gives people uh, the option of sort of peeking into those stories, those lives, those characters. And uh, to an earlier question, would I go see a mainstream film or a Hollywood film or independent? It just depends on what the subject matter is. But I, I find myself increasingly as a woman and as a woman of color, there's just nothing out there that really speaks to me and I'm definitely wanting to see more of those kinds of stories, so. Yeah, I mean, you know, w one thing that, that goes through my head is, is, is I often see um, folks that, that say that they're tired of the franchises, they're, they're tired of the sequels, you know, you know, they're, they're, you know they're, they're tired on one end, but at the same time, when it comes down to their decision, if they're going to support a small independent film or if they're going to see one of these larger films, um, you know, obviously the money talks and obviously they go in that direction. I'm curious if you guys have any commentary on that yourself. Yeah. Go ahead, Christopher. 
I'm not sure how I'm missing it, but I actually don't see a lot of trailers or anything for independent films. And like I said before, the ones that I do see seem to all kind of look the same. So maybe there should be uh, more availability to an outlet to actually see some good trailers for them. Yeah. Where would you where would you look? Like this is this is a question I would you know be very interested to hear the answer to. I mean, because I know that there there are services that do nothing but propagate trailers all over the place um, for thousands of dollars for indie film distributors. Um, what sites are you looking at online where you don't see the like the trailers don't reach you? Or how would I go about reaching you if I was going to place my trailer and I thought it was something you'd be interested in? To be honest, I haven't done a lot of searching online. I'm just saying, in general, in the general public, uh, most of the advertisements we're seeing are the blockbusters or the ones that are more well known and not smaller independent films. Oh, you mean so TV? I, yeah, like TV or oh. in the movie theater when you're seeing previews and that kind of thing. Unless you got like the major Oscar-nominated stars or something in it, then it's they're they're just kind of few and far between that you even see them. Right. Millions of dollars are spent on that. <laughs> That's why you don't see small independent films. In fact, I was shocked the other night when I saw a trailer for Another Earth and it was on television. I was like, man, you know, they, they're really cranking up. Uh, I think it's Fox Searchlight that's got that film. Um, they're really cranking up the money to put ads on television um, to, reach, to reach audiences for that film because I would have thought it wasn't really warranted. You know, and, and we have a, a new visitor. We have Michael. Uh, Hi, Michael. Michael That's you me. Say, Hello. Hey, Michael. Wh wh where are you joining us from? Oh, I'm uh, I'm in Portland. Um, I cool. uh, was actually just looking at my Twitter feed and noticed you guys were doing this uh, and wanted to drop in. I've never done a Google Hangout before, so it's kind of my my version uh, version ride. Um, but uh, <laughs> welcome to the hello, party. Everybody. Hello. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm not gonna be able to hang on too long. Um, so when I leave, please don't take it the wrong way. Uh, I just. I had an appointment, but I. I I'm happy to be here. Are you guys talking about trailers? Yeah. You know. Let, let's pose the question to you. If you have a choice, if if you have a, a Hollywood trailer on one side and, and an independent film trailer on the other side, um, you know, wh which movie are you going to see? You're, to you're talking about on a. Um, am, am I am I first exposed to this on the internet or some other way? This tra these trailers. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know? most likely because yeah. for the independent film, it's probably gonna, it's probably going to be on online where you come across it. Uh, but let, let's say you have a movie that that Karen and I loved, a a, a better life, which is a, a great independent film. You, you have that trailer in front of you, or you, or you have Harry Potter. Which which one are you going to see? Well, that's easy. It's it's going to be a better life only because, uh, um, I, well, I'm not a big fan of, of the other film uh, gotcha. franchise. But yeah. uh, <clears throat> you know, as, as indie, I think I'm predisposed to uh, supporting indie film. I think, I think you know, Joe Sixpack or random random person um, is is obviously going to go with the the thing that they know looks more professional or, or they already know of the franchise or the people or whatever. It's just, it's, it's just, you know, that's just the way it works. It's, it's harder for you coming, you know, from the abyss. No one knows any actors in your film. No one knows who you are. No one's heard of this film before. You're nobody. Unless you have a amazing still or, or someone else that, that the perks, Unless it's being recommended to you from a friend, then why would they, why would they watch the trailer? You know, mm -hmm. you're talking about watching the trailer or going to the film. You know, getting to that point where you're gonna, you're gonna actually, yeah, go and see the film. Well, I mean, if the trailer's good, then then I would go see the film. You know, if it's a good trailer, it's a good trailer, and and there's an art to doing that too. That's like a whole thing in itself. Um, sorry, I didn't mean to hog up all the airwaves. I, I can ramble sometimes. You should stop me when it's, uh, when it's time. <laughs> no, we're throwing yeah, it to the fire. That, that's, good. that's good. That's good. You got another you got a comment, a question? No? 
Oh, all right. Well, let, let me let me throw this out to you guys. Like right now, if if you had to name five must see independent films, I, I'm just curious which which one of you guys is the first one that can raise your hand and say, okay, I have five must see independent films. All right, Jonathan. I have one. Uh, I really enjoyed Charlie Bartlett. Uh, these aren't in any particular order. Uh, there's a great Japanese film called Departures. Uh, Ted Hope's movie American Splendor blew me away. Uh, there's a Polish Brothers film called North Fork. And uh, I guess I only have four offhand. that just not, absolutely knocked me my socks off. Go ahead, Christopher. I have two. One is The Butterfly Circus, directed by Joshua Weigel, written by him and his wife, Rebecca. Um, the link I just put there is butterflycircus.com. And then the other one is on YouTube. It's called Spider. Are those both shorts? Yes. And they're actually in the process of either finishing up writing or making a feature for The Butterfly Circus. Where's the chat? Where's I? I, didn't, I didn't, couldn't find the link. I'm sorry. There's some. Um, there's a chat feature in the lower left hand corner. There's a, a button next to the YouTube button that says oh, chat. Got it. Got it. Got I it. think Robert is typing. Um, I have a. I have one. I have one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, this is out now, or at least out in Portland anyway, which isn't saying much. Um, Troll Hunter, pretty good. It's it's a. I think it's an indie film. Um, yeah, it's, it's 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 somewhat indie film, so it's a current one. It's like a it's like a Norwegian film or something like that. Gotcha. Okay, it looks like Robert is typing Robert Pilkington, and he's saying number one Rubber, number two Hesher, number three Remember Your Death, which is a short, and number four Troll Hunter. Yeah. Like also John Paul well, Rice. I know that like a, a ton of um, Sundance films that were bought during the festival will be coming out in the next couple of months. So you'll probably like Another Earth is one of them. Pariah is another one. Uh, Macy, Marlene, Marcy, whatever it was that Ted uh, helped to produce is, is coming out as well soon. Um, so it takes about this long, nine months from being bought at the Sundance Film Festival to actually coming to a theater near you, but they're all coming out in August, September, October time. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Sherry, I mean, is, is it hard for you to find a good independent film? Um, yeah, where I am right now it is, because <laughs> I'm in Northwest Florida in a teeny tiny beach town. Uh, no, they're not real big into independent film here. I was shocked when The Kids Are All Right actually was playing in the theater for a week or two, because uh, that's not the kind of fair they would normally have. Um, I expect the uh, Sarah Palin film to show any minute um, <laughs> in the local theater, just because it's a military town and, you know, they're very Republican here. Um, uh, so, no, I, I, if, the, if an independent film isn't on Netflix or somewhere online where I can watch it, iTunes or um, Amazon or something like that, then I have to wait till it is, unless the filmmaker sends me a DVD. I think going back to the, the whole trailer question, it sort of makes a difference where you see your film. So I think maybe um, the more appropriate question is, given a choice, would you, would you see a film in uh, more of a national chain or in an independent theater? And I think if you're, if you're watching the majority of your films in an independent theater, you're more likely to see independent trailers. And that's sort of what's going to make the difference. Mm -hmm. So, uh, John, welcome. Assuming, where, assuming the place you live has a decent independent theater, which is not always the case. John, that's an issue. That's an issue of where, where yeah. these places are located. Uh, I know in Chicago... Um, a lot of these sort of mainstream Hollywood type theaters are around, but there's very few art house type movie theaters that cater to the independent market. So you have to, as a filmmaker, you're thinking, well, where am I going to show this in my own community, in my own hometown? You have to go 
to uh, the exhibitors that need to fill up those theaters when they don't have these big blockbusters, you know, around. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I guess I want to jump in there for a second. I, um, and then we're going to come, we're going to come to you, John Paul Rice, right after this. Um, but what's interesting is, is, is what we're seeing more here in the Los Angeles area. And, 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 I, and, I, and I believe around the country is we're seeing like around the holidays, especially like, you know, Halloween comes to mind where a lot of stores will pop up, um, you know, for Halloween only. Um, and, and they become like these successful stores to just, you know, where, where they take over. Sort um, of a novelty store. Yeah, novelty yeah. store. Costumes um, and things, yeah. You know, but we, we haven't quite seen that all the way at big movie theaters yet where instead of having the big films for the entire week where maybe they just shuffle in um, special events, uh, you know, or, or, or one day screenings or, or just one off screenings. Um, but, you know, I'm wondering, how, you know, if we're going to get to that point where we see more of that, you know, where we see more mainstream theaters finding a home um, for, 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 for smaller films and giving them a chance. I think that's an interesting situation. I mean, I think that's that's thing future, possibly, but um, I think that sort of gets back to, you know, the, the concert analogy of, you know, taking a show on the road and, and trying to reach people like that. Um, and I think, you know, for some films that that does work, I mean, certainly Kevin Smith, for example, had success with that. Um, but I would say, you know, as someone who spent some time as a musician, I don't know that that's really the best thing for our industry because it's exhausting and, and um, not always sustainable. It's um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure that the traveling filmmaker. I'm not, I'm not too sure that that's a future where we're all um, able to make a living and, and make the films that we want to make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what about like movies going straight to your set top box? You know, video video on demand. I, I, I think that's that's. I mean, that's great. That that's obviously working now. Um, but going back to the trailer issue, then how are you finding out about films? Are you watching like you would on the DVD before your um, you know, video on demand starts? Or are you just watching ads? And right now, I think you're just watching ads, you know? Yeah, I, I think there needs to be some sort of system or, or a new model in place to publicize along those lines. The trailers, maybe, again, I don't know, independent filmmakers or some sort of distributor can just start sending trailers directly to your your own set-top box and you just see it like you would any commercial if you're signing up for a service, so to speak. Well, I think there needs to be actually an education in consumers as well because I think consumers are used to just taking whatever people give them. They're not used to having to search for anything or look for anything. And if you really want to watch an independent film, there's no excuse for not being able to find out information. If you have, you know, several, there are many, many sites. There are sites that are just for trailers. Um, iTunes is one of them, uh, where you, you know, a trailer addict and, and movie trailer.net and all that kind of stuff that if you're really interested in finding out about new films, you can go to those and they exist and you can get your, your trailer up there. Um, I think people are too used to being fed it on their television. So they go, well, I don't know anything about the new films because I haven't seen a trailer because it hasn't played on my television. Um, And now that everything's moving online, I think we'll have more people curious, doing more research, being open to looking for things that they want to find out instead of waiting for it to come to them. I agree. I still think people are going to need some sort of packaging to deliver that to them, though, because they're a film enthusiast, and, and people are always going to find a way to find new content. But um, you know, if you're looking at expanding an independent market out to you know include your your casual viewer, sort of like the casual gaming market is expanding right now, then there has to be some sort of aggregator. And and iTunes is great; it's all there. But you sort of, I don't know that you stumble upon things in iTunes. You sort of go there with from a link or with an intention. Well, more and more of these sites are going to be searching for what you watched before, and they're going to be much more intuitive about the things that you're interested in, and then serve those things to you, which I think is a good thing and a bad thing. It means some of your privacy is being monitored, um, and some people don't like that. 
Um, but on the other hand, it serves to you things that they know you'd be interested in and doesn't, but, and they don't serve to you things that you wouldn't. So you wouldn't be bothered by a general ad. You'll be bothered by things that they know you're interested in based on, I mean, what we're doing right now on Google Hangouts, I'm almost positive is being tracked in some way to know who we hung out with. And I don't know if we're being monitored for what we're talking about, but people know we use Google, you know, we're doing it through, um, certain apps, we might be putting certain um, links up on the chat bar or whatever, and all that information can be mined and tracked back to us. And then we're fed more of it. That's scary. Um, I like the music, whoever's going with the music. Um, but let, let's say hello to, to Mr. John Paul Rice. How are you, John? Can, can, can you... Um... Hello, I don't know if you can hear me at all. We can. Yep. We can. We can we hear can. you. Um, you know, how about you just jump right my mighty little HP laptop? Nice. Um, t tell, tell us what you love about independent film, John. Well, I love the opportunity to be in a group like this and people who are like passionate about what they're doing, trying to figure out what is the next stage of, of distribution as well as getting our content out there. Um, for me, it's being able to create stories that you're you feel are important to tell and not having a lawyer or a distributor or another studio executive water down your material because that's essentially what they do at every step of the way. Um, so, you know, it gives me great pleasure and pride to be able to be a part of a community of people that are trying to work together at the same time rather than to compete against one another. And all of us are trying to do what we love which is tell a great story. So, John, given the choice, would you go see a Hollywood film or an independent film? Or would that depend on uh, the piece? I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's if the subject matter really appeals to me, if the story is interesting to me. I mean, I, I have to be quite frank. In, in some cases, I do love independent film, but I don't necessarily just watch every independent film. I mean, it's really for something to to speak to me through a trailer or through a review is why I want to see something about this film. Possibly also is when a person of authority who I put authority into, uh, say, for example, like Jet Lo of the Film Talk, if he talks about a movie that he loves and he tells me why, I trust his opinion. And so I, I'm more inclined to go and see that film. You know, Christopher, is there anything you you just want to that, that just you know I I I'm, I'm lo I love what you have to share. I'm just wondering if there's anything you want to kind of throw out here. Just putting you on specifically, the specifically, what, what would the question be specifically? Sorry. You know, I, I don't know if there's a specific um, question, but just anything going through your mind at some of the the things that everyone's bringing up here. Well, I would have to say that I do agree with. Some of what Sherry said, as well as some of what John said, regarding, you know, she's right. We we, if we're interested, we do need to look more. And then John's right too. The general population might not even think to look for the content. So for them, there needs to be some kind of packaging. So I would agree with both of those perspectives to a certain degree. Um, I had some thoughts uh, <laughs> chiming in two things. One, um, one thing that uh, a Hollywood film has in its favor is a big budget, you know, blockbuster is, um, you know, if it's a type of film that everyone's going to watch or if, if, if it's like a piece of, you know, film culture of that year, I, I often will watch it. You know, if I, I want to see the film that everyone's talking about just to take part in the conversation sometimes. I've definitely gone to see films for that reason. Um, both good and bad. But uh, and that's one that's one thing that a blockbuster film has over an indie film because you know more people are gonna see it so so more people are gonna see it just alone. But one thing that an indie film has in its favor um, that a blockbuster can't do is because of the smaller budget, um, it doesn't have to appeal to a larger audience. And so it can appeal, you know, very, very directly to a small audience. Um, 
and we've we've seen all this before, be it, you know, um, an ice hockey movie, you know, someone who's into ice hockey is going to go see that movie because they're into it. Um, I mean, it works with a million different mini genres. And that's, that's one thing you can do within any film is, is appeal to a very small audience, but appeal to them in a big way, you know, blockbusters can't do that. Thank you, Michael. Um, uh, who's, who was, John, was that you going to add something there? Yeah, I just wanted to um, say that there's, I mean, I, I wanted to share with the group something that we're going to be doing um, this fall, and that is we're launching a website uh, for our company. Uh, we're, we, we went out and bought the domains for the names of our films, and what we're going to do is a, a splash screen, just a one-page which gives the trailer so that it can be cached at Google, but everything is going to forward to the main uh, company site, and we're going to uh, use Dynamo or Distri Distrify as a player um, for streaming only to start with the film. Um, and I, I'm only saying this because it was brought up uh, at uh, the Pixel uh, Post Studios when we were doing the future of film cur curation about Lucas McNally mentioned this, but I really think this is something that independent filmmakers uh, should take heed. And that is for any review that you get online, um, you should talk to the blogger or the reviewer who's doing the review of your movie and see if they would be cool at the end of the review to insert the uh, embedded code for that video so that people who want to see the movie right away can do so and not have to hunt or search for it or wait for it. Um, I think this is a very easy and simple thing to do, and I've already had a couple of bloggers that have tested this with in terms of asking them. They think it's a great and fantastic idea, and they're ready to do it. Uh, I also think filmmakers uh, for independence need to get a Vimeo Plus account, and that's something that costs maybe 60 bucks a year, but to get reviews internationally especially when you're going to be launching a website, you'll be able to send that link with a password-protected um, code so that you can send it off to you know, Germany or uh, down in Latin America, and they'll be able to review your film possibly in another language and yet still embed the video for your entire film that people can buy, especially now that PayPal is available, I think, in over 180 countries. What's the name of the international review site? Well, no, no, not the international review site. I'm, I'm saying that uh, for your video, it would be Vimeo.com, right. V-I-M-E-O. Yeah. And you can go on there, set up a free account, but the um, for the Plus account, it gives you the option to upload up to five gigabytes per week of video. Okay. You know, something we want to throw out to you, Sherry, since we have you here. Um, do, do you feel like a lot of uh, filmmakers that, that work on smaller films, you know, let, let's say budgets under $250,000, are, are they spinning their wheels trying to get their film into theaters or, or like going the festival route and, and spending however many months um, trying to get their film in theaters? Are, are they spinning their wheels? Um, I don't think that it has to do with budget level of the film, the production part. Um, it better, but you better have money saved for going into theaters if that's really what you want. Um, because minimum you're going to be spending about 50,000 with a service company to do maybe 10 cities, maybe. Um, and then that doesn't even count for having a publicist that you're going to need because the whole reason that you want to have your film in a theater is to get reviews so that it can help to feed your ancillary sales um, when it's finished. Uh, you know, even if you have a distributor who's, it's going to be really rare to find your distributor who's going to take a $250,000 film and put as much or more of that to put it in a theater unless they really, really think that there's going to be a return and more for them. Um, and even if there's a return and more for them, that doesn't mean you're getting anything for it. They, they'll probably give you like a $10,000 advance and see what happens. Um, so, you know, it, like John would say, 
every film is different, every film has a different plan, that kind of stuff. Um, I, I think that the only reason your film should be in a theater is in order to get good reviews. And if it can't get good reviews, and I mean mainstream reviews, then you're wasting your time because then you're going to really, you're spending all this money to be in a theater to get bad reviews or get no reviews um, and no one shows up. That's not even a good business plan. So um, I think if you're doing low budget films, you should be looking more at online distribution, more at self distribution, um, more at, at using <laughs> film festivals as your theatrical rather than, um, than spending the money to put it in a theater yourself and hope for the best. You have a mole, Sherry. <laughs> What do you mean? Look behind you. Oh. <laughs> My daughter, who's been, I'm told several times, you're going to be on camera. Don't come in here. <laughs> Very cute. Um, you know, well, you know, I guess that that should be uh, bedtime for some of us here. And, and, you know, let's yeah. just go down the line. If, if you guys have any final thoughts, and we'll, we'll just wrap this up. And, and, and thank you guys for joining us. Go ahead, Mike. No, that's just, it's the cat. Sorry. Oh, beautiful. Aww. Look at this. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Oh, oh wow. It's the hairless kind. Everybody oh. has their children. <laughs> yeah. How, how cool oh, is that? Yeah, he's a kitten. <laughs> so it's just five a minutes. A hairless today. child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, see, now you got Karen going. There's one of our cats oh. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it it always it always resorts to cats. That's <laughs> it all relates back to them. Yeah. Um, all right, well, we, we want to thank each of you guys for joining us. We're we're in the dark now, um, so I guess the curtains are closing. Um, you know, we're we're gonna take this and we're we're gonna hopefully find a way to post this online. We want to thank you for um, for sharing your thoughts with us. Um, and, and as we wrap up, does anyone have any final thoughts they they do want to add? John, is that okay? I see here, and then we'll wrap up. Yeah, I just, yeah, um, there's a gentleman, I don't know, some of you probably heard about him, Justin Eugene Evans. He had a film, it was, uh, it's been covered all over this week on Voto, I think I'm pronouncing it right, Voto.net. Yes. Oh, yeah. He's had, a, he's had over 800,000 downloads to date uh, since they released it. This is a movie with James Cromwell, an Academy Award nominated actor. Um all the distribution deals that he received were essentially taking all of his rights away uh, for pennies. And what he and Vodo are getting ready to do is launch into a new phase of distribution for pay-per-view, uh, both on cable and on streaming. And I would make a strong effort to everybody out here who has a feature film to uh, contact Jamie King and his mm -hmm. business partners over at Vodo to introduce yourselves. That's that's something I'm doing right now. So Yeah. Yeah. I've I've actually I've been, been talking to you about that. I've had some recent experience with Voto myself, um, with a short film. We put our short film on on Voto uh, to you know, it, it hasn't seen a huge success on it, um, but we haven't really uh, promoted it much, you know. Um, Sorry, that's that's it. <laughs> if anyone has any questions about it, I can I can uh, elaborate. But um, it's a torrent site. It's a site. It's kind of like a pirate bay, but film filmmakers willingly put their films on there. It's it's legal. It's a legal way to distribute your films. Right. Um, the idea is to get a lot of people to. Yeah, no, we we, inter we interviewed Jamie King of Voto.net. Um, do you know when that was, Karen? That was recently. That was in the last few months, I believe. Beginning, beginning of the year? I don't know. I, I want to say April, May, in that range. So, you know, if, if you're familiar with filmcurs.com, you can go through those archives, and, and it's in the last couple of months we did that. Um, so let's go around the horn here. Christopher, thank you for joining us. That's Christopher Sean Shaw. Uh, Mr. John Paul Rice. Let me. I guess let me click on everybody. Thank you, Christopher. Thank you. Thank you for joining Thank us, Christopher. John Paul Rice. Thank Thanks, you for joining John. us in the dark. John Mercer, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John, you were the first one to join us. We yeah. appreciate John on the East the Coast. One. Yeah, absolutely. You, you got this whole thing going here tonight. Appreciate it, Michael. Um, Michael. Thank you. So much. Thank you. And 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 that sweet. Yeah, thanks guys for, uh, for hanging in there. It was definitely worth it. 
Thank you. Cool. Thank, thank you. you. Sure. Uh, Michael, thank you and that sweet cat that you have there with you. <laughs> and you're, and you're thank still, you very much. You're still in the daylight. Yeah, what, I mean, you, you still have that, there? You, know, <laughs> you still have that golden hour there behind you. Look, you look, you look good. Oh, uh, look, it looks pretty bright. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's it's the it's the Pacific Northwest. That's okay. what uh, beautiful. It's gorgeous. What happens. Wow. I hear in the winter it's awful though because it gets it gets darker. Really oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. And, and Sherry, Sherry th thank, thank you, you for so holding thanks back. Thanks, everybody. Really nice to meet you all. Oh, you got it. Thank you, Mike. Pleasure meeting you guys. Thanks again. I thank hope you. we can do this again soon. You got it. Um, Sherry, thank you for, thank you so for coming out of the dark for us and saying <laughs> hello and, and, and for sort of, you know, keeping the family at bay for a little bit. But, you know, we, we, we wish the whole family a good night. Absolutely. <laughs> And we'll talk to you in September as well. Yes, it's time for bed. It's uh, after 10 o'clock here, so. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yes, you will. Yeah. Exciting. <laughs> okay. And Sylvia. Sylvia, Sylvia you have a good night. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you, Sylvia. Yeah, our girl in Chicago. Pleasure Thank you. you all. Likewise. Likewise. Very cool. All right, we're signing off. We'll see you guys all right, soon. Bye. bye, guys.